And welcome everybody to today. It is Monday, March 17th. Happy St. Patrick's Day. And today on the show, we have uh, Mr. Lee Barber, uh, uh, Barber of Presidential Limousine. Uh, he is the Director of Business Development, basically goes out and uh, forms relationships with a lot of different types of people to uh, uh, draw more business for them and draw more business for the limousine service. And uh, Presidential and uh, Bell have been in around, around Vegas for a long time. Uh, I don't years and quite a few years. Yeah, yeah. I mean, 59 years for 59. Bell Trans. Because uh, there's a lot of different segments of Bell, uh, from limo to shuttle to taxi, uh, a lot of different transportation uh, options there. But uh, we're specifically talking about uh, presidential limo today, and welcome, Lee, to the show. Appreciate it. Thank you. Not a problem. Good to be here. I, I've known you for a long time, actually, yep. uh, through a variety of mediums. We've bumped into one another. I think, uh, I think I was even dancing to some Calvin Harris music at a... Uh, at a uh, commercial that you were filming at one time. I think that's right. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, uh, I think uh, fr our friend Kelly Carnes uh, gave a like that you were going to be on the show, and I believe she was there too, and we're all I think she was dancing yeah. in that that uh, location. I wish we had some video of that. Do we not? <laughs> I'm sure there's some there, somewhere. There's got to be some somewhere. That was a that was a fun night. It was just you know over and over again, and this limo pulling in with all this fog going, and right. you know just basically to demonstrate, uh, you know. A lot of your market, so a lot of the market, especially here in Las Vegas, happens to be nightlife industry, tours, um, you know, of course, in the traditional limo sense of, you know, uh, executives going to airports and things like that. So delve in a little bit uh, about what you do with Presidential, how you go about creating these uh, uh, different uh, markets for yourself, because I think uh, if I was reading correctly, it w I don't know if the position was there before... You had it. It wasn't. So okay. I'll, I'll just start with a, a little bit of background on the entire company. So uh, Beltrans and Presidential Limousine is family owned and operated by the Bell family, uh, which is a great family to work for. Uh, JJ and Brent Bell are both at the office uh, five days a week, eight hours a day. They're very hands-on owners. Uh, right. And the Bell family has created the largest and oldest transportation company in the state of Nevada and the fifth uh, largest privately owned fleet on the planet. So they've done wow. a, It's very big. In regards to uh, developing relationships with clients and going out and, you know, getting new business, I think, you know, sales in general is, uh, you know, people, some people get mystified by sales, but to me, sales is just developing solid relationships with people, having, first of all, having a good product that you can right. actually sell, that can actually deliver what you say it's going to deliver. And then when you get out into the field and you're dealing with people, knowing your product well, and then developing your relationships and the trust. Which sometimes can take years uh, sure. and years in this town. It's and you know and, and these limousine companies have all been here for a long time, and so yes, the position was not there when I started. Uh, I actually started as a driver at Presidential Limousine, and uh, you know I'm I'm fairly ingenuitive, and I saw, I saw uh, a need for business. Uh, there was you know I was I would do certain moves for, and I've been in management in other places, so you know my idea was to to grow. Right. And, you know, it started with wedding chapels, actually. I, I started doing wedding chapel moves, and I noticed a lot of the wedding chapels didn't have an actual account signed up. They would just call anybody. Wow, okay. So I actually, uh, I, I, I bugged my boss for, you know, I don't know, probably a year and a half, and he, he talked to the owner about it every time I talked to him, and the owner said, no, no, I don't think we need it, I don't think we need it. And there, there came a time when I just, I took four or five days off work and I just put on, uh, you know, a suit and I went to some of these different chapels and I signed up four or five of them. And over the course of a few, uh, a few months, uh, the accounts really started doing good. And uh, my general manager, Jeff Iverson, uh, really went to bat with me with the owner and uh, the owner took notice and he gave me a shot. And so I I drove uh, in between uh, my sales in the beginning until I, I got the accounts up to par. But uh, over the last four or five years, uh, it's really taken off. Uh, I've, I've gotten you know a really good grasp on uh, uh, the corporate market, mm -hmm. which is a very difficult market here to to manage. Sure. Uh, and it's just been a real life changer. You know, Presidential Limousine in general is just uh, the the way the company treats the employees. And not just because I'm on radio, but they actually treat us all very good. We're one of the, you know, even our drivers get Christmas bonuses and vacation nice. bonuses. So it's been a great experience so far. Really and you has. you uh, started driving back in like June of 07. 07, yeah. And uh, so uh, what do you find, in full uh, transparency, uh, uh, I don't now, but at one time I did work at Whittlesey. 
as, sure. a, as a driver myself. Um, that is the one of their taxi companies, uh, the other one being uh, Henderson. Henderson. Yeah. Henderson Taxi. Um, but to to be in the same company and uh, go from being a driver then to being uh, you know in the back office, what did you find to be the biggest you know biggest difference or advantage because you already had those skills? Well, you know there there's a lot of advantage. The, uh, the main advantage that if, let's start first of all there's okay. there's difficulties as you transition from um, you know any lower level position into management. First of all, you have to you have to empathize with your employees, but at the same time now take over a management position. So you have to, you know, act as a manager. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the most difficult things to learn in the beginning. Um, but one of the advantages that it gave me gave me was, uh, you know, I, I know I know the way the hotels work. I know the way the street works. I know op the way the operations work. I know, you know, what what go what process goes through a driver's mind as they're either doing things correctly or making mistakes and those things right. all help me in training drivers and because uh, you've know, been there you, I've, I've been you there did those I've things done that. so and you know pass on that knowledge is good it, it really helps and you know the thing about uh, our company is that you know both of the bells i mean just to we'll just start at the very top uh, you know before brent bell worked to college went to college uh, when he was a very young man he worked uh, at the company in a low-level position. He worked at the pumps, he worked at the shops, and then he went off to college and came over and back and took over as the GM of Presidential. And then later, JJ came and he worked the shop. And so everybody in the company, uh, all the way down to you know, uh, our uh, most of our management team, they've worked their way through most of the company. So uh, it's mm. it's really good. They do their hiring from within, and what that really gives the entire company is a complete knowledge of how everything works from. A first-hand experience. So sure, it's, and then it's a very good. It's a very good philosophy. You have that, uh, work, like you said, starting off with the pumps. I again, I remember the pumps. The gas pumps. You know, the gas pumps, <laughs> and and being there, and then you know all the different levels of of the the jobs and in the company, they were able to see how those different areas worked. Again, uh, you uh, using the word like uh, empathy for what that was like and how can maybe you make it better as you move up in the ranks and obviously taking in a, a management position uh, you know changes what exactly can be done but at least you know what that was as opposed to well I'm coming in from this other company yes. of being a you know CEO or whatever and I'm mm -hmm. I'm gonna just dictate and you're like well you've never you've yeah, never experienced exactly. it so and in, and in, and in fact um, I can't think of anyone at the company currently that's in upper management that hasn't worked their way from some point lower in the company from, you know, either dispatchers or drivers or, um, you know, I, we have some of the gals in accounting that were, uh, you know, a front a front services greeter that are now running accounting departments. And it, and it, and it really does. And what's, what's good about that is that you're right. You don't have uh, a foreign uh, personality coming in to try and run the show. Right. And, and what's amazing about it is the success that the company's had uh, after all these years to – you know, and the infrastructure, uh, you you have to know, the infra first of all, the transportation industry in the first place, but second, the infrastructure. Being the largest in transportation company in the state of Nevada, we have a six-story parking garage, a four-story parking garage, a couple hundred thousand square feet of, um, you know, garage space, uh, thousands of vehicles on lot from taxis to limousines to shuttle buses, huge accounting departments, massive. Side note. The fact yep. that you guys have garages now are, is awesome. It's a big deal. Just, just yeah. saying. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big deal. <laughs> I remember back in the day. Parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> there was one way at the end of uh, industrial. And, and there was uh, some walking to yeah, do There was that. a little bit of walking. <laughs> and Get your car and you the in. best area in Las Vegas, let me tell you. I'm just teasing. Um, but, yeah, you got uh, – you, you, but it showed that the, the company was in, uh, investing back into the – uh, uh, the company with whatever it was they were making. So that, you know, it was good for everybody around, I guess. Yeah. Um, okay, so we'll, we'll delve into the transportation here in Las Vegas. It's it's this huge industry, and, and you were mentioning things like um, establishing relationships with the wedding chapels. So, uh, but that also goes to a lot of the cas casinos too, correct? Because sure, the re the relationships. I mean, uh, you know, in 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 my market of the limousine industry. So I don't really deal with the retail market, which would be you know your your web bookings and your call-ins and things like that. That's really the general manager and the owner deal with those types of things. So mm -hmm. my my you know my main my main target is is to figure out who is going to book 
who who are people going to go to to book limousine service? And that can be anyone from a wedding chapel to a concierge to a front services manager to a destination management company to a right. travel agency. Just anybody that goes to somebody else all the time to book their transportation co- for them. So the relationships, uh, you know, with the casinos, and it's just it's a very it's a very saturated market. You know, I was just listening to um, talk a talk radio show the other day, and it was talking about conventions and how we win them from. Orlando, and one of the one of the reasons that you know cities like us in Orlando and uh, Texas, the cities in Texas get get these conventions, is because they have the infrastructure for transportation. Right. So if a city doesn't have uh, the transportation, it, it you know really pulls away. And if you know people, I think a lot of the time uh, underestimate our our corporate and convention services. Some of these, sure. you know, even EDC, which is not corporate, but that's it's, a huge it, it's, event. It's massive. Right. If, if we didn't have the transportation to take them out to uh, to the to the raceway, they wouldn't be here. So I even remember being a cab driver uh, during during EDC, and that's it, it's, it's no joke. It's not a joke. I mean, it, no. you you would find anywhere between like 50 cabs in line, and there's mm-hmm. just hundreds of people that you know need to go, and uh, almost probably just as many limos waiting to there you is. know, and that is a good 20 to 30 minute drive at least. That's just from point A to point B. Without the wait time. <laughs> Without yeah. the wait time with, of your with, conga line. <laughs> with all that with all that transportation, I mean sure. it's sad to say you still see the stragglers with their with their furry boots on walking down the highway trying to catch a ride. I mean they do. And there's you know uh, there must be, you know, a few thousand vehicles out there from coaches to limousines, but this this market, you know, even though to some people it may seem oversaturated and they see all the limousines and uh, a lot of the larger transportation companies here are what help uh, provide the the beginning resources for the infrastructure to the the conventions. Right. And you know when these large conventions are coming in, uh, you know ev- the road. I mean, just even if it's not a convention, the rodeo or CES, all of these things sure. are dropping you know millions of dollars uh, into our city. Easy, 150,000 people Easy. in in a yeah. couple of days. And these people all spend money. From the you know not just transportation but they spend the money uh, in the casinos tipping the cocktail waitress the bartender the rooms, you know it's 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 just it's endless. So the transportation really is a key factor in all of these things. And do you do you have these big events, uh, or or is it? I'll, I'll ask the question twofold. Is it do you have these big events coming to you uh, to uh, inquire about logistics, or is it just kind of? set you know okay we're going to have this area because i would imagine again from a a driver perspective sometimes you look at it and you arrive you're like you know who thought who thought this out you know uh and you know bringing that driver knowledge to the table says well if we did it this way this would be better for everybody and even though it didn't doesn't sound like it might be for that particular event thinking so in the end it could work out better I do I do go on pre-cons with some of the destination management companies when they when they come in with the larger programs. Uh, I've been down to you know we'll go to Sam Boyd or Thomas and Mac, um, some of these different places to find staging locations for the vehicles. Uh, it, it does give me a little bit better knowledge of the city and how things will actually run. Um, you know these this this market is just really crazy, and I have to say we're we're very lucky to have the destination management companies that we have in Las Vegas. Right. When you get these large, uh, you know, it, let's talk about something other than CES. You can have one program that will have you know 15 or 20 thousand people coming in on it, right. and they'll have one destination management company dealing with that program who will deal with everything from me and the transportation to the hotel rooms and the room blocks and things like this. And they, they really assist with the logistics uh, and, 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 manning, and manning that end of it. And, uh, but I, I do go out and help with operations and field operations, make sure the drivers are where they're supposed to be doing what they're supposed to be doing, doing pre-cons to go out to the locations and find the best routes, the best staging areas for these things. They, you, you can imagine, you know, when you have 15 or so thousand people all going to Sam Boyd right. for, for, uh, for one event that's just for them, that it, it can be pretty confusing down there. And it's, transportation is usually the first thing people see yep. and the last thing they see. So if anything goes wrong with any portion of it, it's one of the, the biggest things that people uh, find to complain about. And, and to that note is the fact that, uh, and this is what a lot of um, either drivers, sometimes you know, companies uh, don't realize, is that uh, ambassador to the city is that driver because as soon as they're off that plane, 
they're either they're getting in a taxi, a shuttle, a limo, and it, it that's the presentation of of Vegas, if you will. That was my like, uh, you know. Uh, why I did quite well as a driver compared to some other drivers, again, uh, as a taxi, is uh, I, I knew what was important to talk to my passenger about, which was all the things the Vegas had to offer. I was able to uh, be courteous and things like that. So having that uh, ambassador on the front and the back end, you know, you, you – and from the taxi front, you went the correct way <laughs> to the hotel. <laughs> always go the correct always the, way. Always the way back was, how? why do we get here so much faster and cheaper? <laughs> okay, well, that's because I took you this way. But uh, anyway, side note, um, for, DM, for people that don't know, Destination Management Company, DMC, basically do everything for you so you can ha hire this company uh, for whatever. You say, oh, we want to do this event there. Uh, we're going to need a photographer. We're going to need transportation. We need um, uh, an act of some sort to entertain us. We need the room. We need the decorations for the room. We need the food for the room. So they handle all that stuff, and including you know, the transportation of getting, uh, shuttling people uh, to where they need to go in a, in a timely manner. Because a lot of these things, you know, you mentioned like Sam Boyd, which is a, a good 20 minutes from the Strip, um, yes, yeah. You know, or, or you know, sometimes longer depends on traffic. Uh, they need to go from there, then they need to go to a hotel, then they need to go to this, and so well, keeping even, the logistics of that. It's yeah, just and even when they're when people are coming in with these large groups, the the DMC helps you know organize everything from making sure that everybody got off the plane. So the drivers will go in and check with the DMC on-site rep and make sure that the clients there they'll take them to the hotel and the. The DMC also helps them get checked into the room. When you have that many people arriving. Um, you know, and departing or going to an event, you really need coordinators. So they 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 really help they really help us out. I mean, there's been times when you know we will do uh, corporate events ourselves, but the stress the stress level that the DMC takes out of it is sure. quite a bit. It, it helps a lot to have the DMCs. I know as a as a photographer uh, going working for them often it was it was a nice thing because I I didn't even know what they were you know of uh, how they operated. But then when I saw the how the, the whole back because that's the advantage you get as a photographer. You get to see how, how the inner workings work. Yeah, and you're like, wow, this is this is like a little well-oiled machine here. Yeah. And and it's it, because of the the way Las Vegas is. It doesn't seem like. Um, I mean, I'm sure they there are other places, but it seems like this is the place where these types of things uh, thrive uh, at the MSC because of because the corporate market. Yeah, the corporate market. What makes it so unique here in Las Vegas is, and it just kind of built itself that way. I don't think it was a thought pattern of, okay, in uh, 40 years, we want to become the number one tourist destination in the world and the number one convention place in the world. It just kind of evolved that way because the airport's within five minutes of the Strip. The Strip's right there. Uh, the convention center is huge. It's within five minutes off the Strip. Um, and, you know, you just have this infrastructure that's tight. You've got uh, hundreds of thousands of rooms. It's just... It just it's amazing. It's amazing, and and that's why it's it, amazing the work that it takes to get in, to go on these things. The you know the folks over at the convention center, uh, you know uh, I don't know how many how many people in our audience have seen some of these um, Vegas ads on TV, but uh, just for them to think up the Vegas ads and get people to come in here. I mean they go to other cities and and look at conventioners over there and trying to get them over here. Right. The the effort that it takes. Um, to get these people to come to our city, I mean, just the rodeo is a good example. You know, we almost lost the rodeo, oh, and, and yeah. lucky, luckily we got that back. But these are these are all the things that uh, that, that that make Las Vegas turn. It's not just uh, it's not just the retail market. It's it's the corporate market. It's the weddings. It's the vacationers. It's the people coming in on business. It's the rodeos. It's the EDCs, and these are all these are all what make all of it go around. And the great thing about being in the transportation industry is the diversity of people that I get to deal with. I mean, I get to deal with, um, you know, the gal down at the wedding chapel. I get to deal with the concierge at the hotel. I get to deal with the hotel manager. I get to deal with the destination management company operations managers. Uh, I get to deal with all these great people in our city uh, because, you know, I if you really think about it, transportation in almost any, any city is the, is the blood vein of that city. And in this city... Right. With the size and the size of the transportation industry here, uh, it's it's a deep blood vein and it gets a lot done. So it's it's uh, I feel very lucky to you know have the position that I have, and get to uh, associate with the people like you and you know just the diversity uh, of the people that I get to d uh, associate with because 
you know, a lot of people, uh, they, they don't like their job or right. they don't like the people they have to be around. But, but luckily, the people in the service industry and in the industry that I'm in, you know, we're all, we're all here trying to, it's just like you, we're all here just trying to, you know, rep Las Vegas and make it a great city and make, uh, you know, uh, make our city great and do all the things that we need to do to get the people here. And so the people that I deal with are just all very nice. They're all on a, a professional level. They're customer service orientated. So it's uh you know it's it's a good industry to be in for me because uh I just get to see so many people and things. And I don't know if people know, know the enormity of how many people come here. It's about 40 million people that yeah. visit here it's every year. It's you know more than 3 million a month, you know, yeah. and it's just this and it's fantastic. I think that uh it's Vegas has positioned itself, and, and now even better, you mentioned the rodeo. The, the the bad thing about losing something like that is it's this week of time during more one of more of the slower times of the year. The slowest. So then you pull that out, and then, you know, what's there? The industry so fails, yeah. It, it really takes a hit right there. It's very delicate. So, But um, uh, the powers that be in Las Vegas are, are, are making – Hard at work. They're hard at work putting it so – Almost every single week, there's something of, of some magnitude happening here. And the thing is, it's like you, you build up this um, infrastructure, whether it's roads and transportation or hotels or whatever, and the people that work for them. And when it gets slow, those people are still there to handle it. So it's, right. it's almost like the city's built to handle much more than we actually are handling. It's not like, well, let's add more things. Oh, can we handle it? No, we've got, you know, MGM sitting with 5,000 rooms. You've got a huge uh, infrastructure of the Palazzo and Venetian complex. I mean, we can, all, we can handle it. So the, the more that they're bringing in, the better. And you were mentioning all the different types of people that, we get, uh, that you get to deal with. And uh, I'll reference back to being a driver. That was probably one of the, th that's probably the most important thing for me that I miss about it. Um, you know, I, I did it uh, on and off for like 10 years, you know, three years stint here. There's good money in it. It's, there's good money in it, but the, the thing I miss the most, and I know it's not for most drivers because, you know, maybe they have the language, uh, English is not their first language or whatever, but what I missed the most was they got in my car, I said, how's your day going? Great, where are we off to? Cool, and then I start talking to them. Uh, you know, they're CEOs of companies. They're, they're people I, I recognize from watching on CNBC or, or whatever. Or it's a celebrity or something. And it's so diverse, the people that you get to deal with on a daily basis, that for me it was like every – say there's 15 rides a day. They, every, every single one was completely different. different. I, and I would always reference – it was like this. In other jobs, you didn't have that. You know, if you worked in a high-end restaurant, you typically got a high-end uh, person in there. If you worked in uh, McDonald's, you typically got a certain type of person in there. But I had everybody that had change in their pocket to thousands of dollars in their pocket and everybody in between. And that was the interesting and, thing I thought and, about it. And what's, you know, it, just to circle back to what you said earlier in regards to that, you know, the, the driver's... They, they really are the face of the company. When I'm with the client, I'm the face of the company. When the driver's with the client, the driver's the face of the company. And and you're right, making uh, targeting in on that that client's experience, either you know knowing when to talk or not to talk, or what to talk about, or how to engage in conversation. Most of the time, uh, you know, in transportation, whether it's a taxi or a limo or you know a shuttle bus for that matter. People want to engage you. They want to know what you know because they know that you live here and you're part of the blood vein of the city. Right. And they want you to engage them. They want to have that information. And, you know, it's it, – you're right. I mean, it, it can have uh, an impact on their entire stay. They can – you know, you could be the guy they're talking about for a year from now. Like, I have the coolest taxi driver, the coolest limo driver. Uh, and, and they do expect you to be a steward of the city in a mm -hmm. sense. They they want, you know, what shows have you seen? What restaurants have you been to? What's a good nightclub tonight? Can you help me get in there? Yep. You know, they it's it's just like when any of us travel anywhere else. If you've never been there, you don't really know where to start. And right. you want to and the first person you're going to talk to is your driver. Right. What what do you know that you can tell me to kind of educate me mm -hmm. on this thing that I'm doing right now? They that driver has, has run up and down Las Vegas Boulevard. Like you said, they've probably gone to several of the shows, several of the restaurants. What would you recommend? And those were always questions I always got. And I, and I think, and, and, I, and I bring these things up because it, it really delves into why you want, why you want to choose a certain 
company, let's say, you know, a, a presidential, uh, that, that brand and the, and the driver behind it is important. You know, having a driver, uh, it's advantageous for a company to have them in there for, you know, three, five, ten years because now you're the face of that, whether you're a shuttle, taxi, limo. And um, and I, a lot of people don't know. Um, I'll just put this out there. Uh, you can ask for whatever limo company you want or cab company you want, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Um, so uh, having that brand appeal of that company and that uh, specific driver is, I think, important. And, and uh, that's what I really um, – enjoyed about driving you know it's this it's this weird like little <laughs> uh, i don't want to call it like a drug but it's you you leave it and you're like man it feels good i, I missed i missed doing that because it was Just fun you know and it was uh, it was really cool to to be representative of a, a city that you enjoyed and you know and it wasn't just about money it's a job yes but you have to enjoy, enjoy what you do you do so how are you able to, uh, you know, again, like I mentioned before, you're, you're able to take the, the fact that you were the driver, and wh what are certain things that you do uh, to, when you're speaking to a company to get on that level, I guess? Sure. You know, it goes, it goes right into, um, well, first of all, the, the biggest thing about, you know, having been a driver is just knowing my product so well. And it goes it goes right into branding, uh, just like you're saying. There there's many choices here. There's many companies, and you know I'm not one to um, talk about anybody else's company uh, in any negative light. But there are many choices and, and many variations of um, you know classiness, rating, vehicle type, uh, fleet. Uh, you know, and I can say that I'm I'm uber aware of uh, the other fleets in the city and I can say that Presidential definitely has uh, one of if not the most up-to-date fleet uh, in the city it's of true. Las Vegas and the branding uh, and the business model that we have we are the only company in Las Vegas that offers uh, a rose champagne uh, full glassware ice and water in every vehicle from a six passenger to our eight passenger our 12 passenger super escalades 14 passenger hummers and 20 and 25 passenger party buses and when people get in uh when the when the experience starts they're you know they're addressed by a black uh black tuxedo attired chauffeur and you know he he gets them in in the limousine gets the music going there's champagne there's a rose there's water the music it's the lights it's what they've seen on tv it's that it's an experience when people are paying for a premium uh, they're paying, you know, they can, they can take, they have the option to take a taxi and there's nothing wrong with taking a taxi if you want to take a taxi. Uh, but if you want to take a limousine and that's what you're taking and you've paid, you know, $69 for it for one hour, right. then you expect to get premium service. Right. And if you pay for that, um, and you don't get it, then you remember that company and that's not us. And that's why, uh, throughout all the years that I've worked at Presidential Limousine, that we've we've really had success in business. We've done very good. We've you know constantly upgraded and updated and purchased new fleet, uh, and it's because uh, you know uh, to my knowledge we're the top rated on TripAdvisor in Las Vegas. Um, you know it, the the things that we've done and the way that we've set our business model up have really excelled us. And those things, you know, it's you can have you can have you can bring anybody in that that can sell. Right. But, if, but if they don't have a good product to sell, um, they're not going to be a successful salesman because eventually uh, the, the poor product is going to catch up with them. And so, you know, having been a driver and knowing the product from a street level, um, knowing the general manager and the owner and their expectations and the care that they put into our fleet and the care that they put into our business, uh, you know, brought me up through the ranks. Uh, in, in a really positive way, and it's, you know, I, I care about our product, I care about our city, uh, I care about what our cars look like, uh, and in turn, I give that message, we all give that message to our drivers, and our drivers now relay that message to our clients by delivering the premium product that people have paid for, right. and that, if, at the end of the day, that's that's what makes the difference, I think, I think it's it's the branding and, you know, just the knowledge of our company. I think that definitely helps that top down, uh, you know, it does. To, to pass on that information because it's it's not just well here wear a dark suit and you know go, go, go pick, pick up, up rides and yeah. listen to your walkie when we call you to go do stuff it's it's that presentation uh, that comes off and and the and the good thing about being a driver is a lot of times that you can get regulars of the way that you present yourself you know uh, they'll they'll call the company um, but you know they might say well I want Jeremy to be my driver can you can you arrange that because I really enjoyed the experience before? 
And you know, when I would when I was driving, I would always have people would ask me, "What's the best this? What's the best that?" And a lot of times, my approach was, "Well, listen, it doesn't matter, you know, you know, what it is. It's it's the service that's most important because you can have. Let's just arbitrarily take a nightclub. Well, they all have music. They all have probably." attractive people dancing in there. They all have alcohol. So what is the difference between this one and that one? It's how I feel when I go there. Do, exactly. do I feel like I'm a dollar bill when I'm walking through the door? Or do I feel like I'm welcomed and I, they want me there? You know, and it, maybe it's just because I've lived here for so long, but I think that's really the, the determining factor. You can market yourself to your blue in the face, but you've got that one shot. Don't you want them to come back again? To your, to your facility or use your service because you did such a good job and you made an impression on them. That's the really interesting and cool thing about Vegas. You know, we're talking transportation here, but for everything down the line is you got a four-mile stretch of road with every conceivable thing on it, hotel rooms, high-end, you know, low-end restaurants, uh, shows, uh, it's something for everybody in this town. There really is. And there, it, it doesn't matter really what your budget is. You come here, there's something for you. So with all of these options, they all have to compete with one another to be the best. And and it it sounds silly to say, well, all you got to do is be the best at what you do, and you're probably going to be successful. But a lot of times people will cut corners or whatever. But And I and that's part of the reason I wanted Lee to come on the, sh the show is because, not just because I've known him for a long time, but I know – uh, him as a person and what he brings to the table and um, how professional he is and how professional the company is as well. I mean, I re will reference doing that commercial and you were uh, pushing, I think it was the, the 300. The nightclub three, yeah, it yeah. was the nightclub package, but we were pushing the 300 out. and um, Just the lights and the presentation of that vehicle coming through is just like, wow, this is, you know, just uh, uh, taking the time to say, uh, you know, uh, this is the quality, this is what we uh, can present, and this is what we can give you, uh, I think is, is, is what determines if you're company A, which is very successful, and company B, that yes, they still move you from point A to point B, but they don't do it in the same way. Right. I, you know, I agree with that. It's, uh, you know, I grew up here, and in, in some aspects, the service industry is, is a great, great bit different than, than it was, you know, back in the 80s. Um, you know, there there are more places now that have a good product and, and poor service than there was back then. M most places here, you know, thrive off the good customer service. And it's far and few between that you find a place in the city that just has poor customer service. But it's like we talked about earlier. If, you know, the management or the owners of any facility don't transition down the message of superior customer service, it can the you know the right hand can not know what the left hand is doing right. and that message can get lost on uh, any staff member and if one staff member gives a bad experience to a guest then that guest will never come back and everything in this city is a, what you know drivers like to call a personal so that's their personal they come back right. year in and year out we want we want the client to be a personal of Las Vegas to start with sure. and a presidential limousine and their hotel choice when they get in the car with us, whether it's a corporate client or a wedding client, listen, you might come and get married here, have uh, just an amazing experience. You get in the car, uh, you know, at your wedding, we do the champagne, the rose, the wedding goes just amazing. They do pictures on the strip. And then six or seven years down the road, when they're going to come back to Las Vegas for their second trip, they think presidential limousine, and that's what they want. You know, there, there are companies in town who don't put that – uh, personal touch on the transportation and they get in and there's you know no glassware set up in there it's just a long black taxi and it like I said if you want a taxi a taxi's fine but you should only pay fourteen dollars or fifteen dollars to go from point A to point B it's when true. you're paying a premium that's what you want and they get in that car and it's just a long black taxi and they don't remember that company from anybody nope. so in six or seven years when they come back again there's no business for them and hopefully they come to us right uh, but but that branding and that personal touch and you know the the drivers and the things that they do and you know that we all do that's what we all want in this city we right. want we want personals my corporate clients are personals they they deal with me uh, because of the level of customer service that I give them and that my company gives them and that my dr my drivers deliver to them. You know, I tell my drivers um, all the time, I can, I can bring business in, but if you don't help me keep it, 
it's not going to stay here. That's it, the it, important part. Yeah. It is the important part. It's 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 irrelevant. Uh, you know, I can bring as much of it in as I want, but really, if they go out there and they don't do a good job and they don't perform as I promised, then the client's going to be let down ultimately. So sure. a lot of this corporate stuff, that's what it is. It's just it's it's good, solid performance out in the field and delivering what we promised to deliver. And it, it's it's such a unique thing of the transportation industry because. Um, you have to make sure that you hire that good driver because once it, it unlike other businesses, let's take a restaurant, the, the client's in the, the room, there's a manager in the room, there's yes. a server in the room, everybody's watching what's going on. Outside of that, there's if, if, a limo, your, your an, employee a, is away. It's you know? an interesting theory. You hand somebody the, the keys to a 70, 80, 90, 120 thousand dollar vehicle, and say off you go. Right. So there really has to be a trust level. Um, you know the 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 background checks that we do. The you know the everything that we do when we're hiring employees is is very extensive. The uh, Nevada Transportation Authority has tight regulations on hiring procedures. You know, so there's the obvious things like urine tests and background checks and things sure. like that. But it's also personality. Um, you know, you have to have. Um, Somebody who's, you know, and, and this is just from my own person, and I tell this to the drivers, and I, and I gain this experience as a driver, but you have to be a driver, a waiter, uh, a concierge, you have to be a tour guide, yeah. you, you have to be a man or woman of many means. Um, so, you know, and, and, and one of the things about the limousine industry is those personals, and if you want that client to come back in the vehicle with you later to book your own ride, you need to impress upon them um, your service level so you can get them to come back in the car with you. So picking picking the right people for the job is it is very important. Right. You know, and, and you can tell fairly fast. We'll hire we'll hire people and you know, uh we try and figure out as much as we can during the interview process, but you'll get people who will come in and you'll have you'll have uh you know, two people and they both work there for six months. And one person, you know, you say, how are you doing? And they say, I'm killing it. I'm doing good. It's amazing. Right. I love this job. And the second person says, I, I, you know, I think i got to get a second job. I, I, I can't figure this thing out. Sure. And that's because when they get out there, their interaction with the client, they're not interactive with the client. They're not selling the service. They're not talking about, you know, the, the, the tours and the different things that we do. Um, and and they they just don't make it. So the the drivers, uh, you know, obviously are a, a massive um, impact on on the business, and they're very important. So uh, the hiring procedures are, are fairly rigorous, and you find out pretty quick, though. It, you know, it's sure, one of those yeah. things. Uh, you, you know, these hotels they do these you know psychological exams for people and tests and all mm -hmm. this to get them in there. Right. But really, you can do anything you want. It's you really have to just let somebody go to work. And then see what they're all about. So it, it's it it's, it's pretty interesting with it 150 is. drivers. It's it's pretty interesting to see what people do when they get out there. In that industry of of letting that driver go, you mentioned the value of the car, but it just the fact that you are not able to see them, and you have to trust that what what you've explained to them to do, they're going to do. And the reason I even bring all of this up in this in this conversation is because it's not, in my opinion. Okay, and, and again, we we're, we're both come from a, a driver background. In sure. my opinion, it's not just simply, I need, like you've mentioned, I need a black car that fits six people. It's it, because, yes, th are those available? Sure, but um, when it really comes down to it, you need all those extra things that really make that a valuable experience, experience and make it worthwhile. And that's, you know, that's the one of the experiences, one of the biggest words that we tote at Presidential Limousine. So, you know, we really have built the company around um, with, with a very successful management team and uh, very successful drivers, but we've built the company around the word experience. It's a limousine experience, and really that's what paying a premium for anything is. If I, if I pay $500 a night for a hotel room, I want an experience. Sure. I, want, I want the room set up. If, I, if I'm paying for an expensive dinner, I want an experience. So, you know, with we we you know we haven't talked too much about our tours, but we do a bunch. Yeah, of I want to. The, the the things that we do provide a limousine experience for people. So when they get in, they've they've seen movies. I mean, you may be from Wisconsin, or you may be from L.A., or you. It doesn't matter where you're from. You may have never been in a limousine, but you've seen them on TV. Yep. You have seen people get in the cars and this, the videos from reality talk shows to TV to movies. You've right. seen it. So you have an expectation built up inside of you for that 
particular experience and that you're right and that's exactly what you're paying for and that's what you should get and that's what you know uh, and uh, and I think um I know that's what we have built our company based on and it's it's a very successful business model I mean it, it works for people everything that you do when you come to Vegas should all be about on the same par I mean if you're going to go and have that you know, you're, you're going to drop two grand on a table of nightclub. You're going to uh, drop 500 on a, a meal with, you know, a great bottle of wine at dinner. You know, for all those different levels, it should stay on par. So those experiences is, I think, it just is what changes the game and what makes it is. Vegas. Vegas. Vegas, Vegas. I mean, it becomes now it's now it's an adjective, you know. And yeah. I, it's funny. I will see somebody uh, that's in Kentucky. Kentucky Vegas or something like that, and it's always this comparison, but there really isn't because no there's this. I can, I'll stress it again. It's a four-mile stretch of road with everything on it. Mm -hmm. You know these hot, super high-end hotels, and it's one of the cool things I love about this town is that at any time I can go check these places out. I can go to great dinners and all that. But you know, have you know, if you want to go for that special night out with your your significant other. You want uh, you need a, a good uh, transportation to a corporate event, or or even you know you live out in Summerlin, you want to go to the airport. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I used to drive a taxi, but I would suggest going and we getting a limo. <laughs> we, we do that, by the way. <laughs> you do that too, it, it, and you should because it's going to be cheaper, just so you know, or uh, on par. But now you're going nicer. You know, you're going in this uh, stretched limo or a town car of some sort, and it's a different experience for sure. Well, you know, it's what I, you know, the the term for what you're saying is when you do Vegas, do Vegas right. Correct. And, you know, uh, there there are experiences here that you can't get in any other city, and you know, I remember when I was driving, one of the things that was. I, I think it had to be the best, other than just the, the difference, the different people on every move, was that one reaction that people always had when they first rolled down the strip at night. It was like, yep. you could just see it. And I just remember it always made me happy. It always made me enjoy that night and what I was doing, to see people just taken aback, you know, because some, you know, if they fly in in the day and they haven't seen the strip by night, True. or it's night and they're just coming down the strip for the first time, and they've seen it on movies, and they've seen it on TV, and they saw it from the airplane. But there's nothing like Las Vegas Boulevard when you get on Las Vegas Boulevard when the sun's down. It's just gorgeous. And it, 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 it's an entirely different city. It is. It is. And when you do it, you got to do it right. So, I mean, it's, you're right. We have, you know, uh, the DJs and the nightclubs and the wedding chapels and just all these different experiences. Um, you know, we have adventure experiences and hiking and, you know, Lake Mead and just so many gorgeous things around the city for people to do. Um, and, and really, you know, y you, you have to make Vegas your Vegas and yeah. you have to do it right. Tell us a bit about these, these party buses because I've seen many of them. <laughs> these, okay, there's different types. There's either this monstrous huge truck that's, you know, it, Sure. 50 feet long or whatever, or there's these big, huge shuttle buses that are these, and you, and you drive next to them, dark windows, but you hear thumping music and uh, people screaming and having a great time. So tell us, uh, and, you know, the audience, of you know, when you come here and you've got a large group, what is it about the, the party bus or, you know, that kind of an environment uh, that that's so appealing for people and, and different than maybe a limo might be because you want you can do the limo t too it's ju but it's it's just it, it's a completely different way to get from point a to point b it really is so we we have uh we have the we actually have the largest selection of specialty vehicles in las vegas so we have everything from super stretch escalades to super stretch hummers to party buses and the thing about these you know uh for for the groups i mean people will, will take a, a 12 or 14 or 20 passenger vehicle when they only have six people right because it's that experience it's, right. it's the the big the big vehicle on Las Vegas you know and they're out the window like yes this is us we got yeah. this thing um it's it's a just a, it's a different ride I mean it's it's the next level up from the standard limousine so it's it's the bang pow you know and you get on these things and they're just tooled out in there they have the you know the ostrich skin the the wood grain bars the chrome on the inside there's you know, they have their alcohol in there. We give the champagne. There's, it's just, it's a different experience. I mean, you're on the party bus. You get on the party bus. There's the the wood floors, the ostrich, the ostrich seats, the big 42-inch TV in the back. 
you know, there's uh, music going, the videos are going, the lasers going, the girls are the on lasers, the stripper pole. The girls, it's yeah. Just, it's crazy, you know. It's, awesome. I, it, it's interesting because I've actually, um, I just had an experience last year where we had a, a corporate group uh, that that I was I was on a, a ride along with one of my drivers, and we had to pick this corporate group up, and they were just you know very um, very corporate. Very corporate. <laughs> and they they had the opportunity. Don't have we had the opportunity to uh, pick them up in the party bus, and, mm-hmm. and after just a few drinks. Uh, the very corporate people uh, got inclined to get on the stripper pole. Wow! So it's 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 a neat environment because it's it's fun. It's you know the, especially the the party bus. I mean the Hummer and the Escalade and and the party bus are all three different vehicles. Right. When you are on the party bus and the drapes are pulled down and the lasers going and the floor lights are on and the the lights are bumping to the sound of the the, the speakers. It's like a little mini nightclub. It is. It, it really is. And For you yourselves. Got, yeah, it is. It, it's, it's, it's a pretty cool experience. So uh, it's, it's just one of those things. I mean, uh, it, it's, it's amazing. It's fun. And you talk about experience, and, and, and if I could paint the picture for everybody, it, yes, driving down the strip, you know, seeing, uh, you know, the Bellagio uh, fountain show go off and all that stuff, and the, a mirage volcano exploding, those are all great things about that. But the, the when you get picked up and dropped off, you want to talk about a, an arrival. That's it Definitely. because, you know, it's, it's basically a bus. So a typical bus has this big door that opens and everyone walks down from these stairs outside of the bus or enters it that way. And all the people that were that are waiting for the taxi in line that, that's that's a hundred deep see you. All the people that are waiting for their their limo to pull up see you, or they're waiting in valet. And it's this presentation of we are we are constantly we're this party group. I mean, I, I don't know how to describe it of what the what it feels like, but it causes jealousy and everybody yeah, else. Basically, if you're if you want to make that that wow factor and and. and basically ever make everybody jealous of what you are doing yeah. that's it because that's the top of the line that's why you see some of these uh, and i've had people tell me they they seem go by in these other these monstrous trucks yeah. and like wow do you see that thing and that's why it's that wow factor it is i'll tell you we just we just um uh, we have three hummers and just recently we put uh, fifteen thousand dollars worth of lifts and lifts and rims and tires on these things, so they're just jacked up beasts. And when you see, and you know, one of them has an air horn. So <laughs> when you see, it, it is, you it's, hear it it's, coming. It's one of those things. When you see this thing pull in, we're the only company that has it. When you see these things pull in, you see you. I mean, all the way from the people in the taxi lines mm-hmm. to the doorman. When right. I, I remember some of the reactions from the doorman and the bellman, it's a jaw drop factor. And yeah. then you can always tell the people. It just makes you want to pop your collar if you're the if you're the one getting on that thing. It's just it, it makes you feel fresh. It's a good feeling. It, it's yeah. it's similar. It's money to, well spent. It's money well spent, and it people is. will argue that in, interior in, in nightclub, let's say, of how much money you're spending there. It's it's, it's that experience. same thing. It's an experience. Experience. You know, uh, you uh, if for those that haven't gone, you go to a nightclub and you uh, people will order twenty bottles of Cristal. Okay, and it used to be you could have these sparklers going, but not, not you know, fire marshal doesn't want that anymore. <laughs> but they've got these lights going. Gorgeous women. They have this conga line. The the spotlight goes on you. There's a DJ playing music. Maybe he's playing Happy Birthday to you or whatever. And experience. and it's an experience. Everyone's looking at you. That's why people do it. Yeah, that's everybody. You know, everybody knows how much a bottle of Grey Goose is. Right. It's, it's forty bucks. It's forty In the club. Bucks. You're going to pay five hundred. Yep. But you're playing. You're paying for the real estate. You're playing. Paying for the experience. You're paying to have a table. You're have, paying to have people look at you. You're paying to have fun. You're you're paying to be in the environment of the the wave. It's it's. The, the the bottle of sky or the bottle of vodka or whatever you have is irrelevant. Right. You're paying for the experience, just like the limousine or just like it's the same reason you didn't stay at Motel Six when you came to it's Vegas true. because you wanted to stay at one of the top end hotels for the experience or you wanted to stay at one of the hotels with the show because you wanted to see that. It's the same reason you see a show. It's because you want you're paying for an experience and you know people get lost up in, in certain things. But you know I'm, I'm going on vacation myself next month. Uh, and, you know, and I go all out. I, right. I go on helicopter cruises when I get there and, and do things like that be, because I know that I, I'm paying for an experience. So I, I don't get caught up 
uh, you know, I have a budget, and when I go there, I go there to spend it. Yep. That's what I do. Well, that's what, um, when people would get in my car, w- they would talk about different prices of things, and I said, here's the thing that I've noticed, because I've, I've gone a lot of different places, lived a lot of different places, said, for, for what you're spending in Vegas, it's about on par of what you actually receive. Whatever you're paying for that is it's typically the value of it. It's not that they're co- going and trying to get as much money as you, out of you as possible, but you know, you're know you paying, again, experience. You, yeah. you pay for what you get. And I would have guys uh, in the car, they're like, oh, man, I, I paid $15 for a bottle of beer at some club they were at. I said, oh, yeah? And uh, did, did you have a good time? And they said, yeah. I said, were there peanuts on the floor? No, <laughs> right. There's that's why the fifteen dollar beer were the women more attractive. Let's start with there? let's start with that. What was the guy to girl ratio? Exactly. Was, was the guy to girl ratio good? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, that's what you paid. That's for. what you're paying for, and <laughs> that's that's that fifteen dollar beer. And some people don't want to pay that, but that's again, you're paying for the experience. You're sure. paying for the real estate. You're paying for why you're even it, there. It's just like anything else, and you have to consider that. You, you get what you pay for. Right. If, if you're paying $69 a, room, a night for a room, which don't get me wrong, I've done it, uh, but the $69 a night room and the $400 a night room or $250 night a night room, it's it's night and day. The experience is different. The The amenities in the room are different. The bed is different. The shower is different. Uh, I've been to some hotels. I mean, just the rooms are just gorgeous. And listen, you get what you pay for in your experience. So, uh, you know, there are things that you might want to be economical on your plane ticket or or this or that. But when you get here, I mean, you should should get here to experience Vegas in, in all of its amazing forms and just like we said when you get here do vegas right do it right and and you have those options with transportation go for the experience have the rose have the the glassware have the professional have the 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 look of of the car and you can see all of those on presidential's website you can go to presidential limo lv.com uh if you want to just click a link you can go to the jeremy womack show.com and there's a link of uh there for for lee i put a nice profile up for him and for presidential of all the things that they have to offer so when you're coming to vegas next the limo company that you should definitely check out and and in my opinion higher is presidential limo Appreciate that, Jeremy. Thank Not you. Uh, thank you for everything today. I appreciate it. Not a problem. I I told you we we could talk for an hour. That's crazy. That's like <laughs> half an hour. <laughs> Thanks for coming in, Lee. I, I I appreciate it greatly. George on the board over there. He's been quiet today. That's perfectly fine. Again, go to the JeremyWomackShow dot com to see that uh, that bio of Lee and of Presidential Limo, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye.